Holla ballers and a bro fist to you all. I'm slightly wrong. There we go. There we go. Fixed it. All right. How is everybody? Welcome to the Daily Preach. A bro fist to you all. And the only daily that matters. Thank you for joining me on this fine, snowy, blizzardy Monday morning, evening, afternoon, wherever it is you might be. Hello to you, sirs. Hello. This is really annoying me. I'm going to fix this. There we go. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's Workshop Monday. We've had so many workshop, workshop submissions. Workshop submissions. That it made sense to throw in an extra day. Why the hell not? It's one of the best things I do for my own enjoyment as well. I absolutely love workshops. I think they're fucking great. I can't think of a better way to help you. I really cannot. Other than you showing me you play. And I get to check it out. And then we can share that. And hopefully if anybody else is having the same problems... They can see it too, and things to watch in their own play. What is the workshop? You should know by now. But well, basically, you record yourself playing, you upload that to the YouTubes, and you send me a link. You say, can you check this out? If it is something with several things I can help with, I will make a workshop video out of it on the daily. If it's not, I will reply to you in some kind of email with some feedback of some minor things that might help you out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. There have been some more kills on the 5.2 test server. And I know a lot of you enjoyed looking at the new bosses. Uh, but they were bugged, unfortunately. A lot of them had stupid enrages and various other problems with them. So not quite yet. I don't want to show you an unfinished product. Uh, as much as it is unfinished, being on the PTR, I still kind of want to wait. I kind of want to wait until they're revisited and they look a little bit cool. Uh, and we can start, kind of see some good things coming from that. But if you do want to check them out early, I recommend you check out Sparkugs, S-P-A-R-K-U-G-G-Z, that we checked out on YouTube, his channel. He's got all the videos up there for you now. Go check him out, and you can take a quick look at what these unfinished fights look like. Very unfinished. I want to point out, very, very unfinished. Both of the bosses they tested last week are very unfinished, but still you can get a quick idea of what those fights look like. When they're looking better... We'll certainly look at them on the workshop and have a good idea of how you're going to be doing those fights when it's your turn, right? That's a good idea. So today, I like to do the workshop with a tank, a healer, and a DPS. I think that's a nice mix to throw in there. If we could try and keep one of the roles in every workshop, that will be ideal. Of course, not everybody is going to send me all those roles, so sometimes it will be different. But today, we're managing to do a Restoration Druid. A Protection Warrior and a Frost DK. All at various levels of playing, which is awesome. Okay, so we've got different levels of playing from somebody who's just started playing to somebody who's doing some decent level raiding. And that's what we want to see. We want to see that whole wide variety of things coming together. So we're going to be doing that today. So I'm kind of looking in the chat. What do you want to do first? Do you want to see a Prot Warrior first? Do you want to see a Resto Druid? Do you want to see a Frost DK? What do we want to do? I've seen Prot Warrior, Frost DK. Prot Warrior, Prot Warrior, Frost DK, 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 Resto. And this is why we do a mix. Look at all this shit. Oh my god. Deeps, Deeps, Warrior, Frost DK. We'll start with the Warrior. We'll start with our wonderful Warrior. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up for us. Now, our Prot Warrior is going to be an LFR for us today. And he's going to be doing the wonderful final boss in the Heart of Fear. And he's just looking for some tips. Okay, so I'm going to open up this first. And then we're going to play as we usually do. We're going to play the first minute or so of the fight and then we're going to draw some conclusions on things like ui anything that stands out immediately as an obvious issue that maybe we can sort out so let's go straight into this now obviously this is muted so i'm going to play that for you guys now as you can see he's going in a wonderful player and i want you to, first of all i don't want you to take note of much else other than the user interface that's what i really want you to take a look at i want you to take a look at the user interface start drawing some feedback on that and then we'll take a minute just to discuss that uh that's not him saying details details that's the other tank he's an undead warrior which is awesome by the way <laughs> i absolutely adore the fact that he's an undead warrior doing it right doing it right that's what i would say doing it right absolutely doing it right Undead Warriors forever. Taunt ever four Luke, which I believe means taunt every four. Every four stacks, you can go ahead and taunt. <whistles> lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, let's pause that. Let's go back to the main. Let's see, what do we think about the UI? His action bars are huge. That is one point. Yes, his action bars are huge. Um... You don't like the UI? A little bit more help than I don't like the UI. A little bit more to talk about than I just don't like the UI. Too much, too much, too much. It's too damn much. It's too big. 
Uh, menu micro bars in an odd place. <laughs> That's really nitpicking. That's really nitpicking. Uh, buff debuff equals handy. It's too cluttered. It's not in time. Okay, there's lots of different opinion on this. Let's talk about it straight away. Now, I always believe that your UI is the beginning of being a good player. It really is. How much information are you taking in at one time that is, one, relevant to what the hell you're doing and things that you can react to? So, for a start, yes, this is quite big. No doubt about that. The buttons are quite big. But still, his targeted mob is in a nice big area. No problem with that at all. The first thing that really bothered me about this UI is that debuffs are way, way over here. These debuffs are way over here. Not only that, but they're really small, okay? We're not seeing many things in the ways of stacks. If I play it a little bit more, he should get another stack. That's where his stack number is. That is about a billionth the size of his heroic strike button. That bothers me considerably. Considerably, because this is an important debuff to be managing. It really is an important debuff to be managing. And I just, I really dislike that. I also quite dislike this buff bar. There's too much information on there that we don't need. Uh, we really don't need to see this. Especially when we start getting things like Reduce, Life Blooms, Renews. We've got Vengeance on there, Horn of Winter, Blessing of Might, Legacy of the White Tiger. All that kind of stuff doesn't need to be shown, okay? These are standard raid buffs. I actually think Blizzard's done a great job with the consolidated raid buffs. I think this is just superfluous information we don't need. Uh, this kind of thing, I believe this is called mix, uh, mix buff bars or something like that. Uh, something along those lines. I have seen this buff and debuff thing before. Uh, it looks like it needs locking. So I'm not too bothered about that. You can see it says target and cooldowns here. I actually think that just needs locking down. The other thing that actually bothered me about this is this. Now, a UI is something that's very particular to each person. I'm aware of that. Uh, but the fact that this isn't overly clear about who's targeting what. Mainly because it's not just a bold class colour. There is a reason I use a big bold class colour uh, for when I'm tanking. Because I can easily pick out, say, a monk has aggro. That really limited down, limits down my choices and whom I might have to defend. The other thing that bothers me as well is the location of grid. A lot of people don't see why a warrior, a prop warrior, should have an easy access to grid. Now this for me is way out of the way. Uh, this is a long way for my eye line to travel while I'm playing. This is important for tanks because you need to know if somebody has aggro. Especially when you have abilities like intervene and so on and so forth. And safeguard which can actually save people's lives. I'm very interested to have quick access to who is in my raid and what are they doing. I always find that pretty interesting. So this actually, this UI looks cool. I actually think it looks really nice and sleek. Um, I really like the graphical effects. It looks like a UI pack to me. It might not be. I'm not going to say it isn't. isn't. Uh, this looks like some sort of emergency monitor. We don't really need that. But I certainly, there's a lot of information here. And it seems disproportionate. Debuffs should easily be bigger than this. Uh, cast bars and stuff I would like to see in a much better place than they are. I do like this though. This is the same as I would do it, which is anything important that's about to happen. Uh, I would really, I really do like that. And uh, so, this is the other thing that bothers me. Okay, so we're going to go into the gameplay. So what I want you to look for in the gameplay, I'm going to play another 30 seconds or so. That's when I start to pick out some little tiny things. There's a couple of things I want you to try and look for, and I particularly want you to watch Shield Barrier. And perhaps you can help me with what exactly is happening with it. I'm not completely convinced that what I think is happening is happening. But I've kind of got an idea that is what's happening. So, <laughs> not to leave you too much in the dark there. So, I'm just going to play again. I'm just going to play it again. And I want you to watch Shield Barrier. It's there. Shield Barrier is there. I also noticed a strange key buying a Shield Slam on Shift E. I find that that's also quite odd for me. <laughs> I find that quite odd. I'm actually waiting for the bit that's important to me. Like that. What is that? What was that? What What is that? What's that green thing? What is that green thing that's happening with Shield Barrier? It looks to me, it appears to me like you're spamming Shield Barrier. And like constantly spamming it while tanking, okay? It looks to me like you are spamming the shit out of it. And you can't use it. Which means you're just spamming it constantly, constantly, constantly. Like, as soon as I can shield barrier, I'm shield barriering immediately. This is a big thing you need to get used to with prop warrior tanking now. Is That's what it appears to be to me. 
not pooling enough rage. That's what we're going to talk about now. Prot Warriors, the way they work now, is actually to pool rage, okay? You, what you don't want to be doing is spamming defensive abilities on cooldown, unless you're in some sort of really emergency situation. In general, you're at full health and still spamming that ability. It makes sense in a way that you want to keep it up as much as possible. But the advantage is, especially with the Glyph, is that you can actually go to 120 rage. And you can literally save one shield barrier or one shield block on top of the one you're using now. That's how you want to play. While you're tanking, don't be panicking. and like, I need to use these cooldowns immediately. Don't do that. That's really, really bad. You're going to be wasting rage and you're not going to have that cooldown when you need it. You've got to remember how powerful these cooldowns are. Very, very powerful. They're super powerful cooldowns. What I want to see you doing is start thinking about it. Especially keep yourself above 60 rage. And start pre-planning what you're going to do with your rage. Now, you're actually pretty good at that. I'm talking to the author and the, the person who created this video. You're actually pretty good at that. And we're going to see some examples later where you actually do that. But when you're actually tanking, when you've got that mob in front of you and he's smashing you down the throat... When he's really churning up your nuts, you look a little bit panicked. A little bit panicked and you're trying to use as many defenses as possible to take as little damage as possible. Where it would be better to actually pull that rage up and use it when you need it. Use it when you need it. If you're about to cap your rage, go ahead and blow one of those cooldowns. But other than that, save that rage. You need to save that rage. If you're not going to cap your rage, save it until you actually need it. Let's go back into the game. There's a couple of bits I want to point out. Where are we? Okay. So he's not tanking now. Now I want to point out, when you're off tanking, you can see the actual, our, tag, uh, our tank is called Luke. The actual target of target is here, it's Astaroth. Astaroth is currently tanking. You still are trying to use shield barrier. I can see that pretty clearly. You're still trying to use your shield barrier uh, every now and again, and you're not really focusing on your DPS. A small tip here, as we've discussed in other workshops, if you are off tanking, get yourself behind the boss. If you do not have aggro, get yourself behind the boss. You're going to do a little bit more damage. Unless you're definitely expertise and parry caps, you're going to do a lot more damage if you go behind the boss and contribute significantly more to the fight. I also want to point out that your skull banner is on cooldown. Skull banner is a major raid DPS cooldown. Make sure you're using it. It's important. You need to be using that. But get behind the boss, do a little bit more, and it's all going to be really nice. So it's pretty cool. Let's continue on. Boop, 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 boop. Now, Eyes of the Empress on Astroth, you're going to be taking it at 4. Now, you can see this is actually the Rage Bar here. This is pretty cool. So, this is where I want to show you that he is aware of his Rage. He's taking it in nice stead. He's actually nearly full Rage. Gets 4. We're going to see the Taunt. There's the Taunt, and he's got himself full Rage to get his defenses up. I love that. That is a wonderful thing. That is what you prepared for. You knew you were going to Taunt. Healers in LFR probably aren't the best at target switching, so you prepared a full Rage Bar for that switch. Really, really nice. I actually really enjoyed that moment. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty fucking sweet. Now, we're going to skip ahead. I'm going to let it play. I'm going to let it play. Uh, there's something about to happen here which shows a little bit inexperience with tanking and also a little bit of fear of dying, okay? It's quite important as a tank, you don't really have a fear of dying. You need to do your job. Having a fear of dying can lead to all sorts of fuck-ups, okay? If you're really afraid of dying, you kind of need to get that confidence up is that you're not going to die, all right? I really want you to... I sense this in a moment. I sense this in a moment. Uh, we're going to come up to it about 2 minutes 30 in. That's a minor note here. In fact, I'll make that later. That's pretty cool. So Astroth is tanking, keeping yourself nice and high. And can retreat coming in 5 seconds, which is cool. And you're all prepared. Got yourself a nice big full rage bar for the retreat. Here comes the retreat. Here come the mobs. Uh, now, okay. <laughs> this is something that can be called being a bitch. Now, I'm not trying to diss you or anything like that. I'm trying to help you, okay? But what happens here is called being a bitch tank. Don't be a bitch. Never be a bitch. When mobs are coming in like that, you need to be the first one in there smashing your face into those mobs like it's your fucking job. Because it is. It's your job to be in there literally headbutting the crap out of those mobs. I want you all over them like a disease on an Indian takeaway. I need you fucking in there. I really want to see you in there. This is called being a bitch. And this is, this is something that would fail a trial if it was my guild and my tank wasn't in there enough. Uh, I would definitely fail you for that. I would fail a tank who was not in there 
being a little bit of a punk and letting Astroth pick up everything. We can actually see that on the aggro meter here, Astroth is literally tanking everything. Uh, I really don't like that. Do not be a bitch. Get in there, start kicking some ass. Uh, you do some DPS, but even then, if you even if you're a bit slacky, start taunting some of these mobs off Astaroth, okay? It's not fair to your healers. And plus, overall, you do tremendous damage. I really want to see you taunting these off. The minor note I want to point out here is you never use Shockwave. Ever, ever. Shockwave is an important ability. It really is. Shockwave's amazing. Use it. It's really important. You need to get into the habit of using your shockwave. If you're going to spec into shockwave to tank, use it, especially in situations like this. If you're not going to use shockwave, at least take Dragon's Raw and do something that contributes. It's a big, powerful ability on such a short cooldown. Get it used. So important. You've got this stuff here, all these resources. Get them used. Really want you to get them used. Really, what I, what I just I just want you to just boom. I want you to be in there. Being a tank is actually quite an aggressive thing to do, especially if you want to be a standout tank. You need to be aggressive. You need to be the first in there before any foolhardy DPS even has the chance to start DPSing your mobs. I want you in there, and I want aggro all over it. I want Astaroth fighting you for aggro, not the other way around. And if you don't have aggro on something, you're still the tank. You need to get some aggro on something. Share the load. Absolutely share the load. Because that would be a wipe in normal mode. It would be an absolute wipe. Nicely back in, predicted the fight. Got back in and got in position. Now, you're not actually doing anything here. Be aware if you're not contributing... Find some way to be helpful. Don't be one of those tanks. These are so often, so, so often, one of those tanks who feels their job is just to tank when needed. Don't be that guy. That's that healer in your five man who just heals and then complains that nobody takes any damage. Don't be that guy. That guy is a fucking dickhead, right? That guy is a total dickhead. He stands around in your dungeon. He's like a resto shame and he casts Riptide once or twice and then he's like, oh, this dungeon's so easy, no, no one takes any damage. You can contribute the DPS. You can do something fucking useful. You can. You can be a useful member. So I'm going to move on a little bit. Uh, there's a couple more points I want to, I want to talk about. Now, these are going to be slightly more advanced points. Firstly, yes, I know in the basic guide I said use shield barrier. You really need to start getting into the habit of using both. There are situations where shield barrier is better, but fights like this with a lot of physical coming onto you, shield block is going to be superior for that moment. But there are other moments when shield barrier is going to be superior. You need to start thinking about what these do. The easiest way to do this is like this. Is it physical damage, shield block? Is it magical damage, shield barrier? Start thinking like that, and you're going to push yourself up in terms of being a good tank. Thinking about those situations. You haven't got anything else to do right now. You're the off tank. At best, you're behind it, sundering, shield slamming, building your rage. All that kind of good stuff. What I want you to do is start really thinking about your defensive abilities. What should I use here? And there's a good example of where you can do that. So we're going to move straight on. Come on, baby. Mm. Now, you can see this really clearly. You can see this really, really clearly. You can see this distance field. You can see it so clear as day, it's ridiculous. You know what the distance field is. You also know that when distance field runs out of health, it's going to do a magical AoE. While you're doing this, you should be taking that into account. Because in normal mode and in heroic mode, this is significant amounts of damage that you can mitigate really easily with a shield barrier. So this is the kind of thing I want you to be looking at. The boss is actually really simple to control. All you're doing is tank swapping. It's really easy. You don't need to focus on that. You're just tank swapping. You need to see this message every now and again, and that's it. This bit, though, is important, because this is where the good tanks start to stand out. You're fully aware of what the raid is about to encounter, and I like that. I really like that. I do not. So watch this. Distance field is going to start disappearing. No. Go. <laughs> Emma be trolling, as always. So you've taunted now. Now I know that when you taunted there, all you cared about, all you cared about 100% is this area. You just wanted to make sure you survived this boss. Now actually mitigating something like distance field is going to allow you to survive the boss easier because you're unlikely to dip. Really unlikely to dip. I can see you spamming your shield barrier spamming it so try and get out of that habit and use it well this is what i'm talking about you know you need a shield barrier very very soon 
This is where you've got zero rages, so you're not prepared for this. And your distance back field is about to explode. Luckily, it does nothing on LFR. <laughs> Absolutely fucking nothing. But that's okay, because we're planning for normal modes, and this is the kind of habits you should get in. Paying attention to those kind of things is really going to help you out. Help you out so much. So if we skip along to... Where was it? Uh, didn't you tell me the time? De -de 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 -de. Here. This is when the next ads come out. Now you're slightly better here. You get out there nice and early. What I would do is pick a side. Now, what's going on here? How big are those bars? How fucking big are those bars? What is going on with this? This is just the most obscene thing you need to fix immediately. You really desperately need to fix this. This is ridiculous. You do not need to see that. That is just too much. Mobs you have threat on should be, if anything, slightly larger. But you can literally change the color of the mob bar. That's it. It does not need to grow like that. Because this whole area just scares me to death. Because you can't pick out a goddamn thing. Instead of being your screen full of this... Can anybody tell me, I'd be really interested if any of you guys can see this. I hope some of you can. Can anybody tell me where his focus should be right now on this screen? Look at all that information in front of you. All that information. I want, to, I want you to try and guess or see what he actually should be looking at. I'd be really interested to see if, uh, if you guys can spot it. Not Poison Trail, no. Not Recount, yeah, Omen. <laughs> Thanks to law. Yes, Z's got it. Your focus should be here. This mage is about to die. This mage is about to die and you can do something about that. You've got demo barrier. You've got intervene. You've got all these abilities. Use Your focus should not be on this absolutely immense amount of stuff. But look how many cooldowns. You've got shield slam going. You've got all this stuff going on, which is fine. Uh, shield wall, I should say. Or is that the cooldown? That's the cooldown. So you use shield wall and stuff. Your focus shouldn't be nowhere near here. This is why your grid is important. Because your actual focus should be here. This mage is about to die. And you can do something about it. You can see he's dipping left and right. You've got this guy who's about to die. And that's the tank. This is because you've only got aggro on one mob. You can see the kind of damage this guy's taking. Because your aggro is really... Really only on the one mob. Look at Astroth. Astroth is in a bad situation because of this. Because you only have... And we can tell you've only got the aggro on the one. Because it's so big. So, so big. <laughs> it's so, so big. Uh, but this is my attention right now. I spotted it straight away because I'm kind of used to looking at it. But you can see that there. This, this mage is in a lot of trouble. But you're desperately trying to get aggro on various mobs without using taunt. Which is okay. But Astroth's in danger... This is my worry right here. This guy needs serious fucking help. And there he goes. He dies. Uh, you could have done something about that. That's what I want to see. I want to see you doing something about that. I want to see you have aggro on at least as many mobs as the other guy. If not more. Start taunting them and spreading that load. Because Astroth takes an ass kicking throughout that whole fight. And there's a lot you could have done there to, to prevent that happening. You could have prevented a lot of problems there. And I really want to see that. I really want to see you doing that. I want to see Skull Banner used. So be aware of your cooldowns. Be aware of your cooldowns. I really want to see that going. There's a lot of stuff in there for you to do. Minor UI tweaks. Um, but generally, my big thing with this one. Use your cooldowns. You've got Skull Banner. You've got Demoralizing Banner. Start thinking about what you're using your Rage on. Prot Warriors are actually really, really quite easy now. They are. They're really easy. You are tanking, which in itself can feel quite stressful. I completely sympathize with that. Tanking feels quite stressful. But get break it down to what you're doing. In general, you don't have that much to do. You've got to keep your threat, and you need to plan what you're doing with your rage. And actually, that'll take a lot of pressure off you. It'll take so much pressure off you. Think about what you're actually doing in this fight. You've got a tank swap at four. Not too hard. Other than that, you maintain semi-DPS rotation. And then plan what you're doing with your rage. Start looking around the environment for things. Should I use shield block or shield barrier? That's the first thing I'd tackle if I were you. Don't try and do everything we've said here in one go. Don't do that. Start thinking mainly, when should I shield block? When should I shield barrier? Which one's more effective? And you'll start noticing a lot less pressure on you to die. Really sort that tidy, part, tidy bar. 
plate out. That tidy plate is so big. It's so fucking big. We don't need to see that. You don't need to see that. Your screen is filled with it. It's a simple option to turn it down to normal. Change the color. That's the best way of doing it is just change the color if you have aggro or not. And swap the buttons around. Your buttons are really big. Move grid into there. Let's get grid bigger and start paying attention to who has aggro and is there anything we can do about it. That's where tanks really step it up, okay? Anybody, you're going to go ahead and kill this fight without much issue. But we want to see you being a brilliant tank. We want to see you be that tank that's like, this guy's really good. And why is he really good? Because he did things like intervene a guy who's about to die or he safeguarded him. He used a demo barrier at the right time. He's using all his cooldowns. And he's timing his abilities at the right time. It's like, why does that guy take a ton of damage during distance field and you don't? I time my shield barrier so I have an absorb up when distance field goes off. Therefore, I don't take that dip in damage. Those are the things that are really going to start to separate you and make you into a really good player. So step, steps at a time. Lots to work on there. Lots to work on. But one step at a time. Sort out your UI a little bit. It's a lovely UI. Don't get me wrong. I actually really like your UI. It's just not practical. Visually, very nice. Just not practical. Let's make it more practical. You don't need to see all those buffs. You need to be aware of your debuffs. Let's get them closer. Make them buttons way smaller. Make grid way bigger. And start tracking those kind of things. All right? Lovely. That's our prop warrior. And that's fucking awesome. Uh, he actually did a really good job there. He went ahead and killed it, which is cool. <sighs> Who's next? <laughs> uh, what's better, grid or voodoo? I prefer grid. It's again, that, so that kind of thing is really down to your own turn. Druid, druid, DK, druid, druid, DK, druid, druid. Well, it looks like the druid. I'm actually going to save the druid till last. The druid, the druid is one of our newer players uh, who's joined the game and rolled a druid. I'm not sure how long he's played the game, but he's relatively new to druid. That's easy enough to see. The the Let's do the frost DK. Let's do the frost DK. Our frost DK is actually in a decent enough 10-man guild. He's going to be killing the protectors. What are they called? Da, da, da. Protectors of the Endless on Elite Mode. It's still the normal version, but it's still the Elite Mode. So it's the harder version of normal. <laughs> the harder version of normal. Uh, with his guild on 10-man. So I'm quite happy to see this because he's a good player. Uh, a good player. He's just looking to push his DPS that little bit more. Now, firstly, let's talk about Frost DKs. There's loads of things flying around now about Frost DKs. People ask me the simplest question, two-hander or dual wield. Both are relatively good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with either, as long as you know how to play either of them. One of the problems Frost DKs have always suffered from, in my opinion, as someone who played a Frost DK for almost a year and attained world first DPS records, I just want to say, people go on about all the wrong things with Frost DKs. In my opinion, I could, I did, I did. I read pages upon pages of little tricks and tips, which apparently would yield greater DPS than what I was doing. And then I got the world first, which is when I was more confident to say, I don't really subscribe to that idea. Theory crafting, we've discussed this in the past. Theory crafting and practicality don't really always go hand in hand. They're, a good idea is to theory craft. With Frosty Ks, they suffer from the idea of two resources to manage. And that gives people a lot of opportunity to find different ways of using those resources. In fact, it gives people too much time. It's not like something like a Fire Mage. Should I use Fireball or should I use Scorch? Fireball does more. It's easy. Our only resources are our spells and mana. Very simple. With a Frost DK, we have resources coming out of our ass. And not only that, but those resources play off each other in a very unique way that's unique to the entire Death Knight classes itself. So you'll have heard phrases like Master Frost, Shadow Frost, things like that. All these different variations of ways of playing a Frost Death Knight. And that can be really, really overwhelming. If you do wield, you need to make decisions like, what do I do with my unholy rune? If you're Frost, you need to make decisions like, what do I do with these procs? What do I use it on? And then you start getting overwhelmed and you forget the basics. This is what I totally believe about Frost DKs. Forget all the crap. Forget it. Forget all the crap. Break it down to its basic components. Frost DKs generate a lot of resources. You will see a ton more DPS by making sure you use those resources. And that's it. Use them as best as possible and don't try and get trapped in downtime. A lot of Frost DKs message me saying I have so much downtime. 
What do I do? Am I doing something wrong? In a way you are, you're not managing your resources effectively. Oh, I'm global cooldown locked. I read that on some website. How many of you send me messages because you run some website or some guide thing that said, uh, for some guy who's a math magician who says things like, well, this spec is global cooldown locked. Therefore, you must make the most use out of these global cooldowns in order to sufficiently exceed your frost DK. And you read 20 pages of how to not be global cooldown locked or which spells to use in what situation, and then your head's all like, Ugh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I really don't. I'm so lost that you fuck up the basics and you're focusing on things like, should I death and decay here? Should I use, should I plague strike? Should I do this? Uh, I don't know what to do. And then we just, basically we're making silly errors. So we're gonna show the first thing. We're gonna go straight into this. Of course, initially, let's check out that UI. So I'm gonna play this for the first uh, minute or so. I'll let you see what you guys think. Apparently you used Bandicam. Who knew? Bandicam is a great video recorder, by the way, so I'm only joking. <laughs> <sighs> Off we go, I'm the dead precast. Would like to see a countdown pull, but hell, nobody's perfect. Oh yeah, got his tell me when's on. AMS in that lightning prison, like a boss. I like it, I like it, I like it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Ooh, I wanted to freeze it there. I think. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Initial thoughts on the UI. <laughs> Initial thoughts on the UI. Let's have a look. What is that black shaded area by grid? That's just the grid background. You can, of course, reduce that. That's a silly thing. Let's <laughs> interrupt some. Okay. Uh, okay. On the interrupts things. Why do you think... Uh, why do you think there's a problem with interrupts? Let's let's talk about it. Let's not say learn to interrupt. Why do you think it's an issue? Why do you think it's an issue? Remember, the, the, a lot of people like to focus on the problem and not really what's causing the problem. Not lag, no. Too much crap on the right. Thank you. Yes. This is a classic example of what I tell you about UIs. Caspar is over there. That is one major problem here. That is as simple as it is. Your Caspar is not in your direct line of sight. It isn't. Your focus when you're playing World of Warcraft is here. Pretty much always. If you do not fit into this circle, you are fucked. You will start missing things. The big problem here for me is this quartz uh, swing timer. This is completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. A huge fix to buff interrupts here would be to remove that. And move this cast bar to here. As simple as that. This is how obvious it is that sometimes the smallest thing that you think is okay actually isn't. It actually isn't. Just that cast bar being there is a total pain in the ass. It's a real pain in the ass. It is. And it's, you, it's like, it's not that far away, Preach. It's not. And I have to watch my runes. And it's only there. Your gaze is suddenly drawn to here. But this is a fight with a ton of movement and a ton of reaction things. Such as Lightning Prison need to be tracking these things. This vision of this cast bar here is actually a problem. Uh, it's a problem for sure, absolutely a problem. Uh, I also, uh, dis I think you should choose, okay? This obliterate, tell me when, is fine. But if you're gonna do that, turn this off. Have one or the other, don't have both. Duplicated information is a pain in the ass. Duplicated information can really cause you problems. Really cause you problems. You need to pick one or the other. Let's get rid of that quartz swing timer. Let's move that cast bar into here so your vision is there, right near your tell me when proc. And pick, do you want the tell me when for this one or do you want the normal standard blizzard one? I personally preferred the blizzard one uh, for this because this procs so often, I wanted it in a nice easy place. I actually think this is really cool. Uh, I love this, the buffs thing. I think that is really awesome as well. Uh, I have no problems with that whatsoever. So I'm just going to rewind it. In general, the UI is really fine. I haven't got much problems with it at all. Let's get rid of this threat meter. It's just dark. Look, you guys who go on about Omen and guilds telling you to get threat meters, look at the threat. You've gone balls to the wall all out while potted, blowing cooldowns and everything. You are less than 50% of the tank's threat. Seriously, don't need it. Don't fucking need it. Don't really need it. Let's get rid of it. Uh, so I'm going to play it. There's a couple of issues I have at the very start. 
I believe the pre-pot was failed. Let's go back to the pub. Do, 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 but that's no problem. Uh, without a countdown, pre this is actually not our friend's fault uh, by any means. Uh, the pre-pot fail is down to a lack of countdown. I assume they're doing a countdown over Skype, Vent, whatever it may be. Uh, something along those lines. And that's, that's fine, but that causes lag. I want to see an in-game countdown that the whole raid can see. Uh, otherwise, your tank can pull slightly early and that fucks up your pre-pot. We don't like that. Especially if you've got to cast something large like Army of the Dead. You can see he's, he's still got two seconds left of Army of the Dead. The fucking tank's on his way in. Uh, that's no good. So off we go. Alright, the first issue I have is that. What's the issue there? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Omen is boss. <laughs> Omen is boss. Omen is not the boss of me, I'll tell you that for now. Uh, there's a problem here already. What is it? <laughs> cooldowns before the boss, yeah. Pillar of Frost is an amazing cooldown. It's one of the best I've ever encountered in the game. Uh, the one minute cooldown, very cheap to use and very powerful. It literally just boosts your strength, which is amazing for DKs. I absolutely love Pillar of Frost and it's one of the things that drew me to the Frost DK. However, Pillar of Frost is on such a short cooldown that you can in fact line it up very, very, very nicely with other cooldowns. But it doesn't last too long, 20 seconds. The problem is you need to get things to proc to make sure you're getting the most out of it. Don't pop Pillar of Frost. There's a good, you know, you're down to two seconds, three seconds before you start attacking. And it can then take a further, where are we? We're still with five seconds after the cast, four, six, seven, eight. It could take eight seconds before you start seeing things like unholy strength proc. What happens here is you have 14 seconds of unholy strength, but you've only got 12 seconds left of Pillar of Frost. Again, it's one of those things where people go, Preacher, it ain't that bad. It is. It really is. Because those two multiply really fucking nicely. Really, really nicely. It's really, really important. I can't stress it enough. You need to make sure that if you're going to use a cooldown that's on use, that you are definitely making sure you get the full benefit while your procs are up. Really important. It's so much extra DPS. So much extra DPS. We're going to play this for a few seconds. Lovely, like that. AMSing his Lightning Prison. Nothing wrong with that. Keeping his DPS nice and high. But we're again going to run into a problem in a few seconds, which is common to Frost DKs. Where are you? Problem. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Dee -dee 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 here. This problem. This is what causes Frost DK downtime. I'm going to say straight up. If you're a Frost DK who runs into downtime, it's because you're running into this situation right now. And this is what you're trying to avoid. Forget all the bullshit you read on super theory crafted sites. Forget it. It's not worth it. You will literally fuck yourself over unless you are a super advanced player. I mean, just forget it. Focus on one thing with your Frost DK. Do not waste resources. That's it. Nothing more. Do not waste resources. With a dual wield DK, your focus is more on runic power. With a two-handed Frost DK, your focus is more towards using your runes because your obliterates hit that much harder. Okay? So simple. Simplify it that much. Do not waste resources. Do not run into this situation where you have runes about to double charge. That is caused, literally, that is caused by one extra frost strike. Runic power isn't going anywhere, okay? Runic power is going fucking nowhere. It will wait for you. Your only rule with runic power is do not cap it. You are safe. You are safe to do whatever you want if you have about 60 runic power. Try and keep 60 runic power pooled. Okay? Don't start using your runic power at the pull until it's at like 60 to 70. Then use a frost strike. Then fit in another obliterate. Your pull is really important as a frost DK to set the mood for the rest of your resources. It truly is. I cannot express it enough. This is a very, very bad situation to run into as a frost DK because you're now about to have two possible obliterates to fire off. It's going to give you too much runic, but now you've got double sets of runes on recharge. You're then going to have to spam a couple more frost strikes. And it just leads to all sorts of craziness that you really don't want to see. It, it just screws you over. Now, this is the next problem. <laughs> These are minor things. I just want to point out, 
Okay, this is one of those guy. This is one of those workshops of a very good player looking to push his DPS that little bit more. Everything I'm going to be talking about in this workshop is literally things that will boost your DPS by a few k. Nothing more. You're not going to see a 20k DPS increase. What you're going to see is those few k that separate you from being a good DK to a fucking baller, which is where we want you to be. I want that DK because he kicks ass. We want to see. We all have these moments where we have to run away. Something happens. Do not waste resources. Resources as a DK should not be sat waiting. So when we get this situation, lightning prison on me, you are going to do the correct thing, which is run the fuck away. Howling Blast has a range. Has a range. Get out there. That is so... Look what happens when we get back here. Do you remember I told you? How important it is to make sure you do not have this. Where there is like four resources waiting to go. Howling Blasts. If you are running away from the boss, cast something. Seriously, cast something. Generate more runic power as you're running away. The reason this is so important. Again, I, I'm, I'm sort of like, you feel like I'm nitpicking, I know. Or you should be. It's like, well, it's one Howling Blast. It's not a lot. This progressively affects so many things down the line because there's now extra runes involved these runes not used there's damage not done there's also more runic power not generated due to the way that it works with runes generating runic power and runic power generating runes when you stop moving one of them the other one gets more and more affected now when we do these little errors all the way down the line we start losing say 10 or 15 obliterates so many howling blasts get missed so many frost strikes that don't exist because we just let a rune sit there. As a Frost DK, you do not want fully charged runes just sitting there doing nothing. That is really so much wasted. Because that rune can sit there for three or four seconds. It only takes a few seconds to recharge. Therefore, you've now missed out on potentially two lots of Frost Strikes. And it all mounts up. When you've got a 10... How long is this fight? It's like nine minutes or something? Nine minutes. This is a nine minute fight. Throughout the duration of this fight, that all mounts up a lot. And it's so many abilities missed. It really is. It's truly... Uh, just focus on that. Forget all the shit you read about theory crafting. This is what you want to avoid. It's just any chance of possibly missing it. You don't want that at all. It's such a bad situation. Um, okay. Again, back to cooldowns. I don't know if any of you spotted that. There. Empower Rune Weapon is an absolutely amazing ability especially for a class that suffers from downtime okay and power rune weapon is godly in what it does it just says hey you got downtime it gets you out of shit i used to use empower rune weapon in a number of ways preferably during the pull why i've got all my procs up so i want to get as many abilities as possible out while all my procs are up because i will do so much more damage during that period than anything else I don't care if I have downtime in a period where none of my procs have gone off. I don't give a shit because I do so much less damage then compared to when my procs go off. Empowered Rune Weapon allows you to decide when you want to do Mad Burst. Crazy Burst. What you don't want to do is pop Empowered Rune Weapon when your Pillar of Frost is still on cooldown. That is not cool because all the abilities you're going to use right now, like that Obliterate... That Howling Blast, that Obliterate, that Howling Blast, that Obliterate, that Obliterate. All the abilities you used because of your Empower Rune Weapon, none of them took the benefit of your best DPS cooldown. They had Unholy Strength, which is fine, uh, and a Trinket, but you could have just got so much more benefit from this Pillar of Frost. And that would have been really, really nice. I would have loved to have seen that Empower Rune Weapon just using that little way. Lightning Prison again, ams it like a champ, no problems with that at all. Keep it going. Mm -mm -mm. And where are we? Okay, I'm going to skip ahead slightly to here. Yeah. Okay, this is a, a good tell me when. This is Soul Reaper. This is essentially your Frost DK's execute. Frosty, I can't express to you how powerful Soul Reaper is. It's immense. It's absolutely immense <laughs> it was one of the most uh, powerful abilities that were added in mr pandaria as far as, i would say i would go easily as far as to say it could be the most powerful ability added in mr pandaria it is of such vital importance that this thing does not sit on cooldown uh, off cooldown like this 
I can't. It's so much lost DPS. It's crazy. It is a crazy amount of lost DPS. Absolutely crazy. This is the other big thing I want you to look at is Soul Reaper. This Soul Reaper needs to be used on cooldown the second it is ready to go. It is better to sit on a rune, a frost or a death rune, just to make sure that you fire that motherfucker off because that thing hurts so badly and generates you so many more resources. So many more resources. Ah. Oh! It hurts me. It absolutely hurts me that Soul Reaper sits off cooldown like that. It really does. It's, it's almost offensive. It's almost offensive. Uh, a couple of minor things. I think we want to go to about uh, here. Yeah. Right about there. Uh, many of you have done this before. Changing targets. Changing targets is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, a huge pain in the ass for anybody. For Frosty Case, it's kind of another pain in the ass because you kind of have to decide, am I using diseases? What am I doing? But Frost DKs have the wonderful ability of applying a disease with a damaging spell. Howling Blast will put your Frost Fever on. Uh, the, disease, the extra damage you get even by having a singular disease on this mob is seriously important. Uh, you will buff your own damage tremendously. Uh, I know you switch and you did this perfect switch. You switched immediately. But if you're not sure how he's tracking diseases... You can see that it's actually above the target. That's how he's tracking them. I just want to see a Howling Blast as you run over. I and use a Soul Reaper there. Nice, you got it on. Oh no, you didn't actually. The room was reset. Yeah. This is a great opportunity to change the men from the boys. In terms of Frost DK power. Is when you get the opportunity to Soul Reaper off other mobs. Remember this is buffing your haste. Which is your rune regeneration rate. Which means more runic power. Which means more, 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 more DPS. I want to see you abuse the fuck out of Soul Reaper on these mobs. Abuse that motherfucker. Get it used. It's so much extra DPS. So much extra haste. So much extra runes. More runic power. It's so fucking cool. I want to see you doing that. And the last thing I want to show you. The rest of it is pretty cool. Like again, these are minor things. But they all build up. That's the thing. This is what really causes problems. Is they build up over the, the course of the fight. I just... I want you to see you do really well. I really want to see you do well. And the last thing I want to show you again is another example of what we talked about earlier, where it's a bit more, it's a bit more um, highlighted. And it's coming now. You ran a long way. Look how many runes you have. Just look how many runes you have when this happens. Look at that. <laughs> Near enough, every single rune you have is off cooldown. This is cannot happen. It should it should not be allowed to happen. I do not want to see this happen ever. This is terrible. No, don't let this happen. This is so bad. Get these used. You don't need to run away that far. If you remember, you've got things like AMS. You're running away from the magical damage. I get that. Use your AMS. Abuse the shit out of all these things. A lot of the, a lot of the top DPS in the world aren't moving if they can survive it. If they can survive it, they are not moving it. But do not, under any circumstances, allow all your runes to regenerate. Two is too many. And then that is Empower Rune Weapon again. Not too bad. While under the effects of Pillar of Frost. Slightly. I mean, you've got a long time waiting here. This is one of those moments where you can decide. You've got Use your Empower Rune Weapon here. And I can see your thought process was, I have Pillar of Frost up, I have Unholy Strength. I'm good to go with a nice, solid Empower Rune Weapon. The boss is at 66%. You probably have a minute left. This is the thought process that should be going on in your mind. I probably have a minute left. I'm more than capable of delaying that Empower Rune Weapon for my next Pillar of Frost. That's what I would like to see. I want to see you delay it. Just I can only use it once more. I want to use it again. Running away. Let's get some Howling Blast in there. You've still got AMS. Get it used. Get it used. Get that AMS used. Get in there and stick it to him. Especially when you're coming to a wipe. This is a wipe kill. They don't quite pull it off. Uh, due to a lack of DPS. All these things, especially in this phase, really contribute to it. You can see you've got one minute left on uh, Berserk. They're not quite going to make it. That's a shame because they actually tried really well. And it was good to... I heard their vent and it was actually really chill. They were fine about it. But these are the things that are going to help you massively. And you would see, probably from that, you would probably see yourself upwards towards the 100k DPS mark. I would gladly see you at the 100k DPS mark. I think you would be there quite easily. With just those minor tweaks... Those minor tweaks are going to see you up there in the 90, 100k mark. You're on 80 right now. I think you could pull an extra 10, 15k DPS quite easily. And maybe even an extra 5 on top of that with some slight modifications. I would love to see that. I think that would be pretty cool. 
I think that would be pretty awesome. All right, uh, last one. Ooh, I've been going for an hour. Been an hour. <coughs> uh, last one is a relatively long one. <laughs> uh, last one is a relatively long one. So I'm just going to take a one minute break because <laughs> my voice is rotten. Uh, and then I'll be back. So I'm going to take a one minute ad break. I'll be right back. Uh, well, I'm not going to play adverts for you guys. It's no point. I'll be back in one minute. I'm just going to get myself a drink. I'll be right back. Okay, guys? So don't you go anywhere. <laughs> 